Hello, it's Q&A day. I'm gonna be reading some of your comments and answering some of your questions in today's video. I wanna start off by talking about the Surface Pro 4's pen taper problem. Now I mentioned this in my review several months ago and I also made a follow-up video because it was a problem that kept persisting with the Surface where if you drew your strokes too fast, they would taper kind of funny. And this has been a problem on the Surface Pro 4 since it launched in like October or November of last year. And I'm happy to say that as of July 14th, this problem is now officially solved. Microsoft released a patch where they fixed a whole bunch of different things and one of those things was the pen taper problem. Yes. So that's kind of cool. And I cannot tell you how happy I was to hit unsubscribe on that Microsoft forum thread. Some of the other questions I had this week were on my review of the Adenit Pixel Stylus for the iPad. Kaibele says, I think today that they did add Procreate to a list of supported apps for the new Pixel Stylus. And she is correct. Um, in fact, it was the day or maybe the day before I posted my review, uh, Procreate had this big update. They uh, added a bunch of stuff and one of the things was uh, support for the Pixel in Procreate. So how does it work? Well, to be completely honest, my impressions in Procreate aren't that different than the impressions I had in some of the apps I use the Pixel with. From time to time, I noticed when I was drawing with it, it would not register a stroke halfway through a line every so often, but that was maybe only like five to 10% of the time. I thought the pressure sensitivity was a little bit better than any of the other apps that I tried, so that worked pretty well. It also passed the uh, circle test. Can I draw a circle and actually meet the line around the other side? Yes, you can do that. Um, but I also feel like it's still not nearly as good as the iPad uh, pencil or the Apple pencil for the iPad Pro, um, but it's far better than any other Bluetooth stylus I've tried. Several folks also wanted to know how it works on older iPads. I can't really answer that because it doesn't work on my iPad because it's a little too old, but a couple people in the comments left some really insightful things. Here's a comment by Stefano Azalen. He says, I tried it both on my iPad Pro and my iPad Mini Retina. On the Pro, it works decently. On the Mini Retina, it really lags far too much, making it frustrating trying to do, for instance, some simple hatching. I would guess that it's only really usable on something like the iPad Air 1, 2, and the Mini 4. There were a couple other comments that I read on Reddit and also on my post that kind of reiterated this, that if you don't have a newer iPad, you're probably going to see a fair amount of lag with this. This pen. Next question is, couldn't you wear one of those gloves people use when they draw on their Cintiq so that the iPad doesn't detect your palm? Great question, and yes, you can. In fact, if you're going to use one of these styluses, I would highly recommend picking up one of those gloves. They're fairly inexpensive. You can find them online. For the purposes of my review, however, I, I didn't want to use something like that. I figured that if it promotes itself as having palm rejection, I'm going to review it as if it actually has palm rejection, and, and if it doesn't have good palm rejection, which I don't think it does, it's a little bit better than other stuff I've used, but it's not that good, uh, I, I want to be able to review that and say that. Thanks for the video. I am a student and I'm thinking about getting it primarily for note taking. I don't want to buy the Pro just to use the Apple Pencil. Do you think it would be easy to use for this purpose? And for handwriting, I actually think that the Pixel is really good. In fact, I think that's probably what the Pixel is, is best at. Here's a quick video of me writing with the Pixel and here I am again. I'm using it with the Apple Pencil this time so you can kind of see the difference. You can see uh, the difference in pressure sensitivity and that sort of thing. Uh, as you can see, it's I don't think the Pixel is as accurate. However, I think it's good enough for you to do any kind of handwriting it's detailed enough where you can kind of get in there a little bit. Um, and most note-taking apps don't have kind of the pressure sensitivity levels that Procreate does, so you're not gonna see quite as much blobbiness with it that I have here. So yes, if you wanna do note-taking, uh, the, the Pixel's not too bad. Scott Alberts asked, does it slide around like the plastic-tipped ones or more like the tooth rubber-tipped ones? Actually, that's something I forgot to point out in my review that I think is a really great question. There is a little, I don't know what it's, it's plastic, uh, but there is a little bit of resistance and a little bit of texture to it. Um, so it does actually feel pretty good on the iPad glass screen. Um, so I, I will give them credit for that. It is a good feeling stylus when you're drawing with it. Next up, I wanna tackle some of the comments and questions that I got on my review last week of Affinity Designer. First question is, is sure it does designer things and it does so many other things well, including illustrating. That's why the name fits. How can you say it's not a good drawing tool when we never saw you even pick up the brush, let alone show the capabilities of the brush tool? That's a totally fair question. I didn't 
play with the brush cool too much. Uh, the only time I really talked about it was when I talked about how I liked how it worked in conjunction with some of the snapping features and how when you draw one line, it will snap your next line to the edge of that point really easily. But I didn't dive into any levels of pressure sensitivity and what you can do with those strokes and all that kind of fun stuff. Overall, I found that the Affinity Designer review was kind of a harder review to do because this particular app does so much. And like I said at the very beginning of that review in the video, I just was going to be focusing on the vector features of the app. But since I don't use pressure sensitivity in vector programs all that much, I guess I just, it was something that I kind of glossed over. I didn't think too much about. P says, there's a nail in your wall. I tried to erase it from my screen and I failed. Oh, the nail. Everybody was talking about the nail. Can you see the nail? Is it in the camera view? I usually try to crop it out of the image. I am so sorry everybody was driven nuts by the nail in my wall. It's an amazing nail though, because I can't get it out. But honestly, I haven't tried that hard. It can hold my entire body weight! <laughs> Enough with the nail. A lot of folks gave me some great suggestions on how to use Affinity Designer a little bit better. Nozo says you can control C and control shift V to copy paste strokes and fills instead of using the eyedropper. But yeah, I concur. I still prefer the way Illustrator handles it. Carbaholic says, I believe I saw a post somewhere on Affinity's website that says you can change the settings so it won't create a layer for every stroke. There's also a setting on the Mac to increase the contrast and make it easier to read, but it's also a bit of a hassle to change the contrast back and forth when you switch apps. David Martin says, thanks for another nice review. I just wanted to point out that although you're right about selecting objects at 512, on preferences-tools, you can check the first option for object to be selected on the intersection with the selection area just like Illustrator does. Also cool to know, in fact, it's it's nice to know that pretty much everything that, that I didn't like about the workflow of the app is something that is in the settings that I can dive into and that I can change around. So overall, uh, Affinity Designer keeps getting better and better. Last question is by Juan Manuel Gomez Ramos. Hi Brad, one question. Have you used Sketch, the digital design app for the Mac? Do you have an opinion? I have used Sketch and I love it. Sketch is one of my favorite like web design UI tools. Now Sketch also has a lot of vector elements to it, but I don't use it for that stuff at all. In fact, usually what I do is I draw stuff in Illustrator, icons, uh, vector elements, uh, EPS files, that sort of thing. And then I pull them over into Sketch into their own layer folder. But in general, I think Sketch is a fantastic UI tool uh, and has been replacing, I used to use Photoshop all the time for all my web design stuff. Uh, and more and more over the last two years or so, I've started using Sketch more and more and more just because of all the amazing things it can do. So as an illustration tool, meh. As a design UI tool, thumbs up. Really awesome. Worth checking out. So that's my Q&A. Again, uh, I, I don't get to every single question. I have been trying to get to as many as I can uh, in the comments, and I do like getting them. And I also love it, uh, as you saw today, a lot of people came in and answered questions for me. So if you have the answer, feel free to help each other out. That's totally awesome. Saves me a ton of time and makes me happy on the inside. So thank you guys for the comments and answering each other's questions. And that's it for the day. I have some cool stuff planned for the next few weeks. Uh, some stuff that's a little bit different than what I've done before, but I'm excited about it and I think it's cool. So I'll see you in a week or two.